the underdog that is the Commodore 16. Yes, it's an underdog. It's an awful computer. It's horrible. It doesn't play games very well. It was badly thought out. But you know what? I love this machine. Back in the day, my friend had one of these and I never understood what market it was aimed at. It was just an odd thing. It was supposed to be the successor to the Commodore VIC-20, but it was a bit of a failure. And we're gonna look into why that was in this episode of the Retro Shed. But the first thing I've gotta do, this Commodore 16 apparently has been recapped, which is great, but that's not what bothers me. What bothers me is whether the chips are heat sinks because these things have a nasty habit of frying themselves to death. So let's pop the lid and see what condition it's in. In 1983, Commodore was making a small fortune from the success of its quite brilliant Commodore 64 home computer, which of course went on to become the best-selling home computer of all time. The home computer market was booming and the VIC-20 was now a few years old and competition was hotting up in the market. But don't forget the C64 was not a cheap machine, it was around about £300 and Commodore head honcho Jack Trammell wanted not only a replacement for the VIC-20, he also wanted this replacement to be cheap enough to see off rival computers such as the ZX Spectrum. Well what do you do when you want to replace Vic? Of course, you roll out Ted. Now Vic and Ted aren't a pair of old blokes you see down the pub chatting over a pint, they are actually the name of the chipsets in some of Commodore's best-selling computers. Up until this point, every Commodore machine that had been released had also been a success, but dark times were looming for Commodore, and I'm not just talking about the colour of the Commodore 16's case. Jack Trammell wanted to lower the production costs of this new replacement machine, and so development started on a chip called TED, which stood for Text Display. Now this is not the most accurate name for this chip really, because it does an awful lot more than just displaying text. TED of course was meant to be an updated version of the VIC chip that powered the VIC-20. In that it was designed to handle video, sound, DRAM refresh, timing and keyboard input all on one chip. This was literally a whole computer on a chip and this was far ahead of its time and would seriously reduce manufacturing costs by quite a margin. Now the TED chip had a full palette of 121 colours, it also had a text mode of 40 by 25 characters, a multicolour graphics mode of 160 by 200 pixels, a high res mode of 320 by 200 pixels. This does sound pretty good, but TED didn't include the excellent sprite handling capabilities of the C64. This meant that games were going to be a lot harder to program. This also meant that C16 games were never going to look as good or as nice as the Commodore 64 games. But the thing is, Commodore never meant this computer to be a games machine. They were in fact going after some of the business market. So the fact that Ted didn't have the games processing power of the C64 really didn't matter to Commodore at this point. The Ted chip was originally meant to go into two computers. The Commodore 116, which was the entry level machine. It looked similar to what we ended up with a plus four, but it's got a rubber chiclet keyboard. The Commodore 264, which was targeted at business users. And if you actually have a look on the bottom of the C16, you'll see a label that says a 264 series. And there was also a third one planned called the 364, which was a larger machine with a numeric keypad built in. And it also had a speech processor on board. God knows why you'd want a speech processor in business, but that was the idea. Around this time, things took a turn for the worst, and before the TED series was released, Jack Trammell left Commodore. And with him walking away, this meant the whole TED strategy was left with no direction and hanging in the air. Now, of course, when Jack left, three TED computers were finally launched, and these were the Commodore 16, which we have here, the Commodore 116, which was obviously the entry-level one, as I spoke about earlier, and of course, the flagship model was the Commodore Plus 4 with 64K of RAM. Now, as you can see, the Commodore 16 shares the same bread bin case design as the VIC-20 and the Commodore 64, albeit in this different colour scheme. I do have to say the colour scheme looks absolutely brilliant and I love it today. The dark ash grey with the light grey keys looks absolutely wonderful and I'm a massive fan of it. My friend and I were really unhappy with the joystick ports on the C16. You see, to save space on the main board, Commodore dropped the Atari style 9 pin ports we were all used to and went for these mini DIN sockets that literally weren't compatible with no joysticks on the market at the time. Unless you bought a joystick port adapter, you couldn't use any of the joysticks we'd all come to know and love over the past few years and you were left using this thing that was shipped with the C16, which was an absolute turd. 
The Commodore 1341 was cheap and comfortable, it was just nasty and it broke pretty easily so the best thing you could do was go out and buy an adapter so you can use your favourite joystick on the C16. So on the rear we have a memory expansion socket, we have an RF out, uh, we have a video socket which is compatible with the Commodore 64, we have a serial socket for disk drives and we have the mini DIN cassette port. If you are thinking of buying a C16, make sure you buy um, a heatsink kit, they're very very cheap, uh, I think I got mine from Mutant Caterpillar, I'll put the link down there below. You need to make sure that you heatsink the CPU and the TED chip, this is highly recommended. Do not power these up without those heatsinks because they literally will die. Um, I bought a plus four from eBay. I powered it up, none the wiser. It came on for about 30 seconds and then it went black and it had to be sent off for quite an expensive repair. So do make sure you uh, heat sink those chips because they will cook themselves to death. There's a much better enhanced version of BASIC to be found on the TED series of computers. It features enhanced commands designed to make programming a lot easier. No longer did you have to peek and poke your way around the machine to make it do things. This is a much friendlier version of BASIC than we'd seen before on Commodore machines. What a lot of parents and kids didn't realise at the time, that this machine is totally incompatible with the vast library of games and software already out there for the Commodore 64. It's not even compatible with the VIC-20 library and required all new software and games. And were the games any good? Well, no, pretty much no. There are a few good games for it and some are still being developed today, but on the whole it was nowhere near as good as a C64. It didn't look as good and it certainly didn't sound as good. Gone was the awesome SID chip that made the 64 sound so good and in its place was Ted. Poor old Ted, who only had a two-tone generator on board. The C16 has 16K of RAM, the Plus 4, its bigger brother, has 64K of RAM, so you'd have thought that the Plus 4 was a much better machine for playing games, right? No. The C16 and Plus 4 are compatible, but if you're a software developer, are you going to write two different versions of the same game? One for the C16, an enhanced one for the Plus 4. Of course you're not. Why would you bother? Because the C16 and Plus 4 are compatible with each other, you're just going to write your game to run on the lower spec machine. Which means, yes it will run on the Plus 4, but you don't get to take advantage of all that extra RAM. All in all, Commodore was shooting itself in the foot with these two machines, and you can see that it just wasn't properly thought through. The C16 and the Plus 4 had marginal success here in the UK, but they weren't groundbreaking, and they certainly weren't selling like the Commodore 64 ever was. I will take care of it, it does deserve a place here in the shed with the rest of its Commodore family, but for some reason it's just nothing to really get that excited about. Here's a quick look at a handful of games, good and bad, for the C16. Enjoy. This is Tutti Fruity by Sean Southern and I first played this on my mate's computer way 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 back and I remember it being quite good. It's, um, it's a bit of a clone of uh, Mr. Do, which is a fabulous game. Hope you liked that quick look at the C16, thanks for joining me here in the shed and don't forget you can support us on Patreon, the link is there below if you like what we do. Stay safe, take care of yourselves and we will see you again soon, bye bye.